Hi, this is Joseph Lebrecht, and I'm going to be showing you a few new things in Edge Animate that can help with audio and scaling. So I'm going to demonstrate this by using an example from my book, Learning Adobe Edge Animate. Now this is something that was created with Edge Animate 1.0. We can see here that we have the sort of scaling, the responsiveness that was inherent to that particular version of Animate. Also, there's no audio in here, so that had to be added later. If we jump over to Edge Code, we can see that we have our audio tag, and I have two source files, one to specify an MP3 and one for an AUG, and I set autoplay to true. So actually running this project, we can see what happens. So this animates in, and we can hear the background audio playing. Now what I've done is actually set the composition to 100%. You'll notice it doesn't exactly scale, but it does at least fill up the entire viewport of our browser. So jumping back into Edge Animate, we can see that the width and height of our stage is set to 100%, and we have these responsive guides here. We don't, of course, have any audio integration in here that had to be added later on. So switching over to a modified version of this project for use with the newly released Edge Animate 3.0, we can see that things have been changed slightly to use some of the features of this new version of Animate. For one thing, we've got the stage set to pixels now, so 850 by 850. And we also have the stage centered on both the horizontal and vertical. And we've set responsive scaling for both horizontal and vertical. Now this is very different from the sort of uh, responsiveness that we could do before with guides and anchors and things like that. This is actually going to take our composition as 850 by 850 and it's going to scale it up or down depending upon the viewport of the browser. This is really cool because it emulates what a lot of people are used to doing with flash animations. We're also going in, and if you look in the library here, we have a new audio setting. And here we have an audio group, which contains both the MP3 and AUG versions of the file that I had to include manually beforehand. Looking down here, we can see that there is my audio group. To demonstrate some of the interactivity that we can do with audio now, I've also placed this little symbol right here called play underscore sim. And all I'm doing is setting shiver echoes, which is the actual audio group, setting its volume to 0.2. If we look inside the snippets here, play, pause, we can play it from a specific second. We can mute it, change the speed, adjust the volume, toggle mute, toggle play pause, or replay audio. Maybe instead of changing the volume, I just want to toggle play and pause. So what this does is sets up this little audio variable to point to my audio, and then check and see whether it's paused or not. If it is paused, it'll play the audio. If it's not paused, then it will pause the audio. So we can see how it works here. Here comes the, the image in. And right now the audio is playing. Clicking upon that button will stop the audio from playing. And then clicking on it once again should start it up once again. You'll also notice that as I change my viewport width and height, that the entire composition actually scales to the viewport. And this is something that in flash animations we've been able to do for a really long time and it's really convenient especially going across different devices. So now Edge Animate has this sort of all-in-one contained responsive scaling attribute that you can turn on and off. Going back into my composition You'll notice that I switched responsive scaling to both when we went in here. If I change this to width, 
and then test it once again, you'll notice that it actually has the entire width covered here. So these are some of the new things that I've found interesting in this newer version of Adobe Edge Animate.